Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to episode 14 of Rockhold, the Gift of Shadow. Today, we greet, once again, more new people in the city. Rockhold is growing rapidly. I guess it is no big surprise as this city offers a real good sense of comfort right now. I think this looks right, like one of the most sophisticated places that I've built so far, except for the, uh, the, the area with the whale. That's a little bit funky. I have designed a new area where people can live at. It is a very compact apartment quarter, providing 16 new rooms with a frequency of new people arriving. This is more than necessary. I also have ordered at the furniture department that everybody here gets his full stack of furniture things and yeah down here we're starting to floor this place so we will see today also some new areas where people can live at because currently this is one of the most uh, pressing matters this city is growing way faster than we can keep up with so therefore i have come up with a little bit of a plan in between we have these little hallways here and we are going to bring them up as little dormitories so until we have settled down properly these areas here will provide some extra sleeping capacities for the city i think this is a good in-between solution because we can't really expect us to to get this whole thing done just right from the get-go new beasts are arriving and well i i i, I don't see myself capable of uh, whittling down the opposition down there we're uh, still not going for that so there's still not wait a sec petition outstanding grand guild hall crafts dwarf guild i mean Are you drunk, game? Well, we, we we maybe are not fully loaded up yet. So let's completely fill this place with artworks. I mean, I'm never a big fan of that because I personally feel like it is, uh, well, it's cheap. But, uh, well, maybe this time we're going to make a, uh, a change. All right. So, yeah, that has been taken up. Obviously, it took a moment to to actually um, realize that we were there. So I can now delete these. That's uh, it's a good thing. That's absolutely a good thing. All right. So this part of the city is pretty good. I really like the color differentiation between these two. It's not the same. I would like to have my city dif have different colors on different levels. Maybe we're even going to do a different wall color here. I mean, well, maybe not. I really hope that the uh, clothing that's littered all, all over the place will be resolved. But this is a long-term project. Let's get on over to what I had in mind. I want to start thinking about this place here. So... It is about time that we start building our fort for real. And I have come to the conclusion that this is going to be the basement level. This down here is going to be not accessible from the outside. I will use this furthermore as my pasture and my trap uh, corridor and things like that. So I feel like that's the best choice. So. This is going to be where the roads will meet. This level will be where the actual castle foundation will happen. So this is also where the fun part will begin because to really get going here, we're going to need to start building and start chopping. So first off, I'm going to go for church for this castle, I think. Because Chert, I got several levels where I can quarry substantial amounts of. 
So we're going to use dirt for the walls and siltstone for the floors until further notice. So that also means we're going to have to expand <laughs> on this end. That means dirt blocks. I think I'm only pre-producing 200 of these currently. Yep. So that has to be increased to the 1000. We also do require now a nice little stockpile of these. So we're now going full force. So stone blocks. We're going to go siltstone and dirt. So this way we'll have the building materials also available upstairs here. We will take from the Stonecutter's Quarter right here. Good. So, let's get back to this. It's uh, always a fun sight for me. <laughs> All right. That will be the foundation of the Castle of Rockhold. I'm very much looking forward to this. It's always the most challenging part to create, or at least for me, to create a structure where there is none, to create a structure that seems to mold into the environment somehow. But, well, the basic ideas that I got while I was looking intensely on this map between the two episodes, I think I'm getting somewhere that we all might enjoy. So, a little bit of wall building here and a new entire living area is done so what's really important these beds will only be used if we declare them as dormitories just realize that the housing shortage is so dire it's uh it's gonna be like that so two of these intense snoring it's going to be very useful though for us to have here a bit of a of an extra area people to just relax all right church will be quarried in large amounts luckily we have the legends of sand walls in or in our midst and therefore things are going out going on a lot easier so this will also mean that here will probably we'll do a siltstone tower hmm. Maybe that's gonna be it. I, I don't know yet. So the first things first, we're going to start flooring this place properly up. So there goes. Well, we are going to deconstruct the the atom smasher unit. We're also going to deconstruct all the ropes. So this is the beginning of a really large project, and I'm very very much looking forward to it. The problematic part about all it will be that once we start chopping trees, the animals here in the area will get agitated. So, I recently had a good read on the um, on the new DF hack update where they were working around with new settings for that, and I learned a lot about how um, Savage Land biomes work. So, in case you didn't know, I'm gonna explain now. So, whenever we chop tree out here or do anything that disturbs nature, I'm not quite sure if building things also counts as that, there will be an agitation counter going up. That agitation counter makes giant agitated or agitated animals in general spawn. This agitation counter gets lowered each year. That's that. And to make matters worse, when one party of animals has left the map, a new one will be refilled immediately, which leads to endless assaults of agitated animals quite often. What do we have here? The Farmer's Guild desires a guild hall. Well, we are currently so massively in the construction business, so why not build a Farmer's Guild hall as well? So, I am going to go and install that somewhere around here. Is, uh, to me the most ideal and fitting place but I'm looking for a wear so yeah I think this is uh, going to be 
this is going to be it. And I am going to build a fairly large thing here. So we're going all in here. These guild halls, you benefit from large constructions and so far, as you saw, if you only have art to spruce up the place, the more area you can fill with art, the more value you generate, obviously. That's the strategy that we're using here. Okay. So that churns out another substantial amount of siltstone, and that is also one of the reasons why this place is going to be built out of siltstone as well with church. So, yeah. I want to create a more reliable network of traps and I also want to make things look orderly so we are going to uninstall this entire suit of traps here. I'm not sure if the construction of the main stairwell will stay like that but I'm very inclined to do so because well for one storytelling wise it does make sense for me you know the entrance that you started it all with, usually you only change something about that running system if you really have to, if it's bad to have the entrance there. But uh, I don't see any real horrible things happening around there, so we're gonna keep it. Therefore, the entire design of the fort will follow around this uh, entrance. And I do like the idea of making a tower out. The highest building will be around the entrance. I'm... I, I, I don't know. I'm going to roll with this inspiration. It's uh, something I do appreciate, so we're gonna do it. First steps in that quest are replacing the entire place here with uh, blocks. So, Gorax! Hey, Gorax! <laughs> That's something I didn't know. So, as you see here, this guy has asterisks, that's because Gorax was already a fine warrior in Sandwalls. Obviously, Gorax's story is not over in Sandwalls, he wants to soldier on over here. So, yeah, you know, Gorax, I'm the last person denying you that. I mean, by now he's a legendary fighter. It's, uh, I like it. Because that makes storytelling-wise so much sense that the human fighter is obviously residing in the fort that is providing a, a diplomatic surface between the human and the um, worn kind. It's excellent. Alrighty, brilliant. So here goes. I think I'm going to replace the uh, rockfall traps here also with something more reliable and something more lethal. So as nice as stonefall traps were, we mostly used them out of uh, bare necessity. So here we got now weapons out of glass and this is what we're going to utilize for this corridor. Not only did we break it up new, uh, new and nice, we are also going to spruce up the evisceration and puncturing and shattering qualities of this corridor a little bit. Well, let's do another little construction here, and that's gonna be the stairwell. Let's make that siltstone as well, because I personally value a uniformist look in these regards quite a lot. I, I hate it if things look badly. Anyways, so we're going to redraw the stockpile here and erase it here. And so we can put down rock blocks, uh, or floor blocks down here. All right. So as you can clearly see, we're spending or siltstone blocks like, uh, like crazy. That's spin to that, that has been to be expected. So we're uh, we're going to repaint it inside though because I have a bad feeling about my my building materials lying outside where the chaos can grab them. I don't think that chaos can grab entire blocks, uh, entire um, entire crates of blocks, but giant chaos possibly can. I don't know. They can't steal literally anything as far as I know, and therefore, meh. So, 
So we, we just did that little trick for that. The burps can't go in here because there's a roof on top of it. They have to fly through the corridor of death, which has been built in an impressive pace. I mean, these are... Ah, these are only armed with one weapon. Good thing that I double-checked. You <laughs> see, yours, you saw that you can't get off here easy with a lazy day of work, huh? No, 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 no. That's, uh, that's not how we do it. We're going to fill these with the maximum amount of traps. I thought that it, that it would save my settings from the previous time, but it obviously didn't. Shame. So, it's, it's a little bit odd, because I, I show you why. Um, here, it did save my glass settings, but the number of weapons didn't yet increase at the same time. But the last time I was building only traps with 10 weapons included. Anyways, I learned out of that. I feel like the setting should be saved. We're also going to reconstruct the trade depot, because that's just uh, here. Got to put some floor below it, eh? And now let's get back to the water trap. Ooh. Oh, friends. Let's start pumping. So I think we finally did it. Alright, we can prime the weapon now. Hell yeah! So, yeah. The confinement... Uh, of the water with doors and all works brilliant. Look at that. It's, uh, it's just working as intended. I love it. So this chamber here does fill our needs. Oh well. Ugh. I am somewhat unhappy with the uh, reflow of things so we're going to dig out some some expedition here. I hope it doesn't drown anybody. But I don't think so. They should be able to get out of there. Just to make sure that the stuff that comes from this side is flowing easier towards here again. We can currently only work here because the water is uh, being removed. Okay, that's quite a dangerous task, I, I gotta admit, and I think we gotta stop because I... Yeah, the chamber's full now. It stopped moving. The moment the water stopped moving, we, uh, we gotta shut the door. Bam. And now we can stop the, uh, pumps. All right, so that's good news. It's working out exactly as I wanted to. So let's start pumping once more here and fill up the drowning chamber. Okay. There's uh, an odd satisfaction for me to see these machinations work as intended. So... Hello there! Goblins have arrived. Well, what a timing, dear friends. What a timing. So, yeah, I... I'll just leave them to their fate, I'd say. I mean, I guess most of them won't make it. So, here we go. Pull that one here again. And Snatchers are trying to get into the Ford. So good thing that we provided some new quality gear. Okay. Oh boy, the stealth ones. So we don't even get a combat readout about how they splattered. But, well, this one here will provide us a readout, obviously. Yep. So, how did it go, huh? They're dodging a lot of these things. I gotta say, it's amazing. But once they uh, once they get hit once, 
shifts uh, immediately over, evisceration directly at the first blow, and the rest is just, uh, yeah, well, let's not read that out loud. It's quite gross and gory. So, the raven, on the other hand, what's going on with that creature? Do you see that? It's going straight for the capital, man. Wow. So, it did go past all the traps of mine? Crazy. So, it did remind me, though, that we need to block these doors, obviously, during war times. So, where's that siege going? All right, this one can stop pumping. Nice. So we only need to wait until this chamber is full, and then things can go accordingly to plan. So yeah, that one, he, he did go through all of the traps. But uh, all right, he he got a cut in the in the leg. So. And then he, well, then he hurt himself more. All right, so the rest of the siege is obviously fleeing after they've seen that they got uh, mechanically beaten. So, yeah, go back where you came from, filthy creatures. Wait a sec. They're just regrouping. They're simply regrouping. Okay. So let's station them, boys. Behind the traps, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, there's, uh... There's a lot of goblin puke down there. And I think the siege is over. So, let's see. Um, Nish punches the goblin bowman in the arm. All right. So yeah, we uh, we finished off a few, and uh, well, but none of the traps did hit the the goblins. So their dodging uh, dodging abilities are not bad at all. So I think we are doing the right thing, providing ourselves a nasty second layer that will take care of our problems, you see. So, oh. What is uh, up with Kogan? Did he get injured by the traps as well? No, he got hit by a arrow. No, Kogan. He's, uh, he's Direly injured, got a arrow in the guts, so it's uh, it's actually dwarven puke. Well, not that it matters, but uh, well. So horrible, but well. What did Zazit think about all these things, and how is his life lately? So he's hauling stones currently, chert, and he's been very blissful about being parent. Wonderful. And the bedroom is nice, the door is nice, waxworking is nice, obviously. Our dining rooms are legendary. Oh, I didn't even know. So all in all, the life of Zazit seems to be a pretty, pretty good one. He's uh, married to Ubul, the tavern keeper. I see. So that's how our relationships go. So yeah, there's a fine new family grown. And let's get into the hospital and see if our friend Kogan is getting treated right. Well. No treatment scheduled, so he's been already treated, obviously, so here we go, yeah. So evaluation, cleaning, 
Stitches on the guts. Whew. Yeah, alright. So, obviously they were able to... Uh, to stitch the whole back t uh, together. I am very, very relieved that Kogan didn't... Uh, fall victim to this filthy goblin arrow. That would have been really, really sad. So... That's all being done. Let's get back to the guild hall uh, thing, the farmer's guild hall. So we obviously need some workshops in here. All right. So it's the first trap that I exclusively defend with traps and low amount of soldiers. And I can say it's a lot of fun so far. So farmer hall, the guild of swamps. Cloud of Glaciers. Huh. So this place already comes with a 1,500 dwarf box value. It's just what we got out of uh, putting enough schist on the ground, obviously. Quite surprised about that. We are also going to put down some workshops. As I personally always find, this makes the, the guild holds so much more lively. There we go. This does incorporate the spirit of a Grand Guild Hall one, one day way more than without it. So let's go and make it obviously available for everybody because the policy of uh, Rock Hall is just that. Lovely. I mean, we obviously still need to art it up a little bit. So let's engrave the entrance area. And personal favorite tricks are obviously to hide the art below the workshops. But there's nothing wrong with heavily engraved walls in my book. It's perfectly fine. I think this will fulfill the... Um, petition just fine and we can now consider how things will be going here so the good part of all that obviously our our machinations and our schemes work out so well that we can fend off pretty much anything attacking us it's a good part the bad part is though that uh well we have so much more to chop and so much more to build. We also need way more stone workers. Obviously, we're not getting the job done fast enough yet. So let's get started with that part. So for that end, we're going to make it like this. I'm going to build in little cavities. Not only does it provide fresh siltstone to work with, we're also going to get ourselves some nice places where we can't put up the stone workers workshops. Because we need to spruce up our production capacities. It's just not enough. And the workshop really close to the stone storage area has another nice little side effect. There's not going to be a long hauling um, time here. I mean, I'm not really optimizing my fortress as much in terms of uh, work efficiency and all those things, but, uh, well. So, Morul, let's check out your life. So, Morul is a rusty woodcutter. I'm pretty sure she will be very, very pleased to see that her services will be needed very, very soon. So... People here are communing with Erdem quite regularly. That's good. Our temple seems to be working just fine. Looking forward to see how this culture will develop over the course of the time. We're almost out of drink. Jeez. Wow. 13 drink. That is uh, ultra low. So we need to very, very quickly do something about that. And obviously, we need to talk about agriculture here once more. 
So, no biggie, we're going to set up a new farm. Well, let's see. That should do the trick. Wonderful. We also have the uh, water supply integrated already. So this will be a place where we're growing plump helmets all year long. That's uh, just going to be the simple solution to our uh, constant problems on that end. And obviously we don't have a rock hatch right now. Sheesh. Well, little things. So, my friends, it's time to end again for today. Sad as I uh, am about that, I'm very, very much looking forward to our next adventures. So, feel free to check out the comment section below and leave one down there. Feel free to leave a thumbs up on that video to show the algorithm that you enjoyed so it can recommend it to other people as well. And of course, leave a subscription on the channel or check out the description box and check out the description box, I should rather say. And uh, there's lots of links down there to other Dwarf Fortress things, to lots of my previous seasons. And there's also Discord, Twitch, and PayPal, Patreon, and Buy Me a Coffee are also there if you are trying to support the channel. That's the best way to go for it. That all being said, thanks for watching you all, and see you all on the next episode. Bye-bye.